and welcome to this section on clearing and settlement. In this section, we're going to review some of the specifics regarding introducing and clearing broker dealers. We're going to take a look at how settlement occurs between broker dealers and the role of the DTCC and its subsidiaries. Now, a carrying firm, a clearing firm, or a general securities broker dealer is one that has custody of client assets. It maintains physical possession and control of a customer's cash and securities. The general securities broker dealer has a minimum financial requirement to qualify as a clearing firm of $250,000, but $250,000 wouldn't even pay the bill to set up the computers and back office operations for a clearing broker dealer. Every clearing member must be a member of the Depository Trust Clearing Corporation, and they will interact with other members in the settlement of buying and selling of securities. Now, an introducing broker dealer is a non carrying BD, has a minimum financial requirement of $50,000, and they are perhaps a small broker dealer with only several offices, and they find it more convenient and cost effective to contract with a general securities broker dealer or a clearing firm to provide the clearing and settlement and custodial functions for their customers. So the in introducing broker dealer is going to introduce their customer business to the clearing or carrying broker dealer and the carrying broker dealer will maintain custody of their client assets and will handle the settlement functions for all of the transactions. There are two ways that this agreement or clearing arrangement can be structured. It could be structured as a fully disclosed clearing arrangement. With a fully disclosed agreement, the clearing firm knows all of the information regarding the customers. They are aware of each and every transaction that each and every customer does. When the order is entered to buy 500 shares of Microsoft, the clearing firm knows which customer bought 500 shares of Microsoft. So all the terms and conditions of every trade is clearly known by the carrying broker dealer and they know which customer bought and sold which security. When you have a fully disclosed clearing agreement, all of the confirmations and statements are going to be sent by the clearing or carrying member. All of the confirmations will, and statements will have the name of the introducing broker dealer as well as the name of the carrying or clearing broker dealer. So this is the most typical style clearing arrangement, a fully disclosed agreement where the clearing firm knows the identity of all the customers, knows all the assets they own, and knows all the trades that they make. And as such, they're in a position to send those confirmations and statements. A clearing agreement could also be set up on an omnibus basis. If you have an omnibus arrangement, an introducing broker would have all of the assets for all of their customers held in one single account at the clearing broker dealer. So the account would be titled XYZ broker dealers and all of the customer assets would be contained in that one account. Here the clearing broker dealer doesn't know the identities of the customers and they do not know which transactions were for the benefit of which particular customer. Because the clearing firm doesn't know these details, when you have an omnibus clearing arrangement, the confirmations and statements must be sent out by the introducing broker dealer because they're the only ones who know which trades are for who. Now, when you have all of the customer assets pooled in one omnibus account, 
the introducing broker dealer may not allow their customers to trade on margin. You can't put other customers at risk because certain customers want to borrow money to buy securities. So no margin trading in the omnibus clearing arrangement. This really is the exception to the rule. Most likely testable for one question for you on your exam. Now, the clearing agreement is a very important arrangement for the introducing broker-dealer, and it is a large part of the general securities broker-dealer's business. When an, a clearing agreement is entered into with an introducing broker-dealer, or sometimes known as a correspondent broker-dealer, that clearing broker-dealer must file that clearing agreement with FINRA for review and approval. The introducing member files the agreement with FINRA for review only. Now, the broker-dealer who is providing the clearing services, the general securities broker-dealer, is going to provide a wide variety of services to the introducing broker-dealer, and they will also have a large number of reports that the introducing broker-dealer can use to manage their risk and to review their business. Every clearing broker-dealer must provide a written report to their introducing broker-dealers annually detailing what types of reports and features it has available for the correspondent or introducing broker-dealer to manage their business. This report must be provided to the introducing broker-dealer at least once a year and no later than July 1st. This is a little bit of an outlier date for the test, but it's one you should know. July 1st, you, the introducing broker-dealers must have received that list of reports available to it from the clearing broker-dealer. Now, the clearing agreement has to have certain items outlined in it. For example, who is going to execute trades? Is the introducing broker-dealer going to execute trades or is the clearing broker-dealer going to execute trades? Who is going to send confirmations and statements? In a fully disclosed relationship, it's going to be the clearing broker-dealer. In an omnibus relationship, it's going to be the introducing broker-dealer. Who is going to be responsible for the any money laundering policies and for the customer identification procedures. Will it be the introducing broker dealer or will it be the carrying broker dealer? Who is going to provide stock loan services for customers who want to sell stock short and who will provide the capital for margin for customers who want to buy stock on margin? Cashiering, who will receive and distribute checks and securities and who will keep the records relating to transactions, customer accounts, customer statements, etc. Now, all clearing members must be members of the Depository Clearing Corporation. And the Depository Clearing Corporation, or DTCC, is a national clearinghouse and central depository for securities. It is owned by the members, it is regulated by the SEC, and it is a member of the Federal Reserve Board, meaning, God forbid they needed it, they could borrow money directly from the Fed. Now, the DTCC has started or established three different subsidiaries to handle clearance and settlement in various types of situations and securities. You have the Depository Trust Corporation, you have the National Securities Clearing Corporation, and you have the Fixed Income Clearing Corporation. And we're going to take a look at each one of those closely, and we're going to detail their role in various transactions. Now, the DTC, Depository Trust Corporation, as a subsidiary of the DTCC, holds broker-dealer non-customer funds. It does not hold customer funds, it holds broker-dealer funds. 
it holds all securities in book entry or journal entry. It does not hold physical certificates. All of the securities are held in street name, meaning the name of the member broker dealer. And they offer the DWAC system, which is deposit and withdrawal at consodians for member broker dealers. They can make deposits of cash and securities and withdraw them as need be. The FAST system is something that you may see just definitionally. The FAST system is a feature of the DTC that has all of the securities registered in their nominee name of Seed & Co. directly with the transfer agents of the corporation. So I'm going to say that again. The FAST system has all of the securities held electronically in book entry form with their nominee Seed and & Company and these are held directly at the transfer agents for those securities. Now the NSCC, the National Securities Clearing Corporation, provides clearing and settlement for the DTCC. All transactions are done on a continuous net settlement basis every single day. They take a look at the securities that were bought and sold by the, by the member broker dealer and they net them out. If they bought 1,000 shares of XYZ and subsequently sold 500 shares of XYZ, the net amount would be 500 shares. It's continuous net settlement. The members submit a trade report at the end of the day for all transactions that were executed by that member. On trade date plus one, the member will receive a contract sheet showing the confirmed trades, the ones that are all locked in and all the terms and conditions are, are known and valid. And they will also receive a report regarding the DKs or unconfirmed or broken or open trades, ones that did not compare. This will be given to them on trade date plus one. What securities clear through the NSCC? Well, it's corporate equity and debt securities, it's ETFs, it's ADRs, it's limited partnerships, it's municipal bonds, certain non-traded REITs, among others. So all these transactions are going to be settled on a continuous net settlement basis for member broker dealers. Now the Fixed Income Clearing Corporation, or FICC, provides clearance service for mortgage-backed securities and government securities. They provide real-time risk reporting and matching for all transactions in these fixed income securities. They also provide same-day settlement service. So here we've kind of broken down the three subsidiaries of the DTCC, the Depository Trust Clearing Corporation. We took a look at the DTC. We took a look at the NSCC and the FICC, all three playing a critical role in the settlement and clearing of transactions between clearing broker dealers. So some good test points here for you. Take a closer review of this material in the text, and we'll see you in the next section.